So we are going to talk about some of the properties of quadratic residues in terms of the indices relative to a particular primitive root. So let's say we're looking at the standard quadratic residue congruence, which says x squared is congruent to c mod p. If we want to determine whether c is a quadratic residue mod p, our goal is to find whether this congruence has a solution for x. In order to do that, we're going to reframe this congruence in terms of indices. We know that every prime p has a primitive root. Let's call that primitive root g. In that case, what we can do is look at the index of x squared and the index of c. Now, because the powers of a primitive root g will give us all of the numbers mod p except for 0, and we don't really count 0 as a quadratic residue, so we don't have to worry about that, we can represent both x squared and c in terms of powers of a primitive root g. And that's where the idea of indices comes in. So we can say that x squared is congruent to some power of g mod p. And in this case, we'll use the index notation log base g of x squared. So this is saying the index of x squared relative to g. Similarly, we can say that c is congruent to g to the log base g of c mod p. So we can substitute both of these values into the original congruence that we see up here. So again, this is not a standard logarithm. This is talking about the index of the number relative to g. Now, one of the properties that we saw with powers of a primitive root is that if two powers of a primitive root are congruent mod p, then their exponents, in this case log base g of x squared and log base g of c, those two exponents have to be congruent mod p minus 1. And now we can start doing some work with this congruence that we have here. One of the properties of indices is that if we have an exponent inside of the index, we can pull that out to the front. So instead, we're looking at 2 times the log base g of x is congruent to the log base g of c mod p minus 1. Now we can rewrite what we have down here using the definition of congruence mod n. If this congruence is true, we can rewrite that as saying 2 times log base g of x, this left side, minus the right side, log base g of c, that has to be some integer multiple of p minus 1. Now let's think about when this equation could have a solution. First of all, I'll note that because the powers of g give us all of the numbers mod p except 0, we can make log base g of x any value we want, from 0 to p minus 1. Now when we were looking at the original idea of a quadratic residue, what we were doing is fixing the value of c, so setting a specific value of c and then trying to figure out if we could solve for x. So let's see whether this equation is solvable based on the different values of c we could plug in. We know that 2 times the log base g of x, since we have a factor of 2 there, this has to be even. Also, when we're looking at this quadratic residue, let's say we're looking at an odd prime number. Now every prime number except for 2 is odd, so let's say we're looking at a prime greater than 2. In that case, p minus 1 is also going to be even, which means the right side is going to be even. So this equation is only going to have a solution if the left side is even as well. So even minus what is going to give us an even number? This needs to be even. Now, if the index of c is even, if this number is even, then we can divide everything in this equation by 2, and that'll give us a log base g of x out here on the left side. Without even looking at the rest of the equation, because we can set this index of x to be any number that we want between 0 and p minus 1, we know that this equation is going to have a solution if the index is even. On the other hand, if the index of c is odd, this equation is unsolvable because no matter what value of x we choose, we're going to get even minus odd, which is never going to give us an even number. What that's telling us is that if the index of c is even, then c is a quadratic residue. And if the index of c is odd, 
then C is a quadratic non-residue. Another way that we can think about that fact is using the definition of an index. We know that the index of C is the number such that C is congruent to g to that power mod p. Now if the index is even, say we could write it as 2 times some integer r, then we could write c as equal to g to the 2 times r, which we could also write as g to the r squared. So almost by definition, if c has even index, we can immediately write it as congruent to the square of g to the r, meaning it must be a quadratic residue. Now the last thing we're going to do is use this idea of indices to prove a fact about quadratic residues. Namely, we're going to figure out exactly how many quadratic residues are there mod any prime number. In order to do that, we're going to take a look at the set of all possible powers of the primitive root g. So you have g to the first power, g squared, g cubed, g to the fourth, and so on, up to g to the p minus 1. So this gives us all of the different numbers mod p except for 0. We know that these are all going to be different numbers mod p. So if we're asking how many numbers are quadratic residues mod p, we just showed that's the same thing as asking how many numbers have an even index relative to this primitive root. Well, we know that these are all the numbers mod p. So how many of them have even index? That's going to be g squared, g to the fourth, g to the sixth, and so on, up to g to the p minus 1, which we know is even. So that's going to be half of the numbers. Of course, half of the numbers have even index. And as a result of that, the number of quadratic residues is 1 half p minus 1. And this will be true for any odd prime number p. So that's how the idea of indices relative to a primitive root are related to quadratic residues. We know that a number is a quadratic residue mod some prime number p if and only if it has an even index relative to some primitive root mod p. And using that fact, and the fact that of all the powers of the primitive root, half of them are even, we know that there are always one half of p minus one quadratic residues mod any odd prime p.